In 1976, a daring bank heist took place in Nice, France, which was described by the media as the heist of the century. A mastermind thief managed to break into one of the most secure bank vaults in the country and steal over $20 million worth of cash, gold, and jewels, and he did it all without firing a single gunshot. The story begins at Société Générale, one of the largest and most prominent retail banks in France at the time. Founded in 1864, Société Générale had developed a reputation as one of the most stable and secure financial institutions in the country. Its Nice branch was located on Avenue Jean Médecin, steps from the glittering beaches of the renowned French Riviera. Given its prestige and location, the Nice branch catered to many high-profile foreign clients and wealthy citizens who felt it was the perfect place to store their most prized possessions. The vault at Société Générale Nice became known across Europe for being virtually impenetrable. At the time, it was protected by an intricately designed two-ton steel door that was 75 years old. The door was secured by a complex locking mechanism built by one of France's leading security specialists. To access the vault, bank staff needed to successfully unlock multiple locks in a precise sequence using special numeric codes. Alarms would also activate if the door was breached by force. As a result, Société Générale's vault boasted a perfect record with no successful break-ins since its installation in 1901. Clients stored millions of dollars in cash, gold ingots, and precious jewels within its walls, fully confident that their valuables were protected by the most advanced security measures available. That all changed on the morning of July 19, 1976, when the bank's director arrived expecting a typical day. However, when he went to unlock the vault, he found the inner locking mechanism inexplicably unresponsive. He summoned other bank staff to assist, but despite repeated attempts by multiple people, the vault door would not budge. Alarmed yet perplexed, they called the vault manufacturer's technician, assuming it was just a technical malfunction. But even with his expertise, the technician could not get the locks to turn. The vault had always posed minor issues in the past, so the inability to open the sturdy door did not initially set off serious concern. However, a crowd of impatient customers awaiting their safe deposit boxes soon began to grow. After hours without progress, the technician advised drilling a tiny hole through the steel door to insert an endoscope. No one could have imagined the shocking discovery they were about to uncover inside the impenetrable walls. When the technicians finally peered inside the tiny hole, they saw the unthinkable. The vault had been completely cleaned out. Safe deposit boxes gaped open, emptied of all valuables. Gold ingots, cash bundles, and jewelry were nowhere to be seen. Scattered tools, gas canisters, and makeshift bedding alerted them that this was no ordinary break-in. Furthermore, the thieves had clearly taken their time systematically plundering the vault's contents. It soon became evident that whoever robbed the bank must have gained access unseen then shut themselves inside the vault for an extended period to slowly loot 400 safe deposit boxes. The empty fuel canisters showed that blowtorches had methodically been used to breach the locked metal boxes. Food remnants littered the floor, indicating the thieves had camped out inside the vault undisturbed for at least several days. The patient and thorough nature of the crime was astonishing. With no sign of forced entry, the robbers had somehow managed to enter and exit the impenetrable vault-like ghosts. They left no clues besides the emptied boxes and did not trip any alarms. For the stunned bank representatives finally peering into the dark vault through a tiny peephole, the scene before them should have been impossible. In the aftermath of the brazen heist, French authorities were baffled as to how it had been engineered. The bank vault had been considered utterly secure, yet somehow, it had been infiltrated and plundered methodically over several days with all major valuables removed entirely undetected. Speculation was rampant until detectives analyzed logs showing the safe deposit box rentals in the past year. One box stood out as being rented right before plans for the heist would have commenced. The box also had an unusually high number of out-of-hours private accesses. Suspicion fell upon its renter, a modest local photographer named Albert Spaghiari. At first, Spaggiari seemed an unlikely master thief he lived a quiet life running a small photography studio in rural province. Detectives found no obvious criminal links despite Spaggiari's history of minor offenses. With an unremarkable appearance and passion for poetry, few tipped the charming photographer as secretly harboring a brilliant criminal mind. 
but as investigators dug deeper, an astonishing double life began emerging, showing the photographer hid his illicit ambitions beneath an unassuming facade. As detectives interrogated Spaghiari, the elaborate plot he had conceived slowly unfurled. The concept had first struck Spaghiari two years prior when a bank insider mentioned vulnerabilities in the vault's security system. Spaghiari realized that while the vault door itself was impenetrable, the walls enclosing the vault were less fortified. He hatched an outrageous plan. He would break into the vault by tunneling through the exterior walls from underground but attempting to tunnel blindly from the streets above would easily be detected. So Spaggiari devised an ingenious solution. He would gain underground access by tunneling from the city's vast sewer system below the bank. Nice's labyrinth of interconnected sewer lines gave Spaggiari an extensive network to enter secretly and begin digging undetected directly under the bank. Posing as a city plumber, he obtained detailed schematics of the metropolis's subterranean sewage system. Spaggiari now had the knowledge to identify the ideal access point to start tunneling directly towards the vault walls. The audacious plan required massive manpower, tools, and time. Needing a crew he could trust, Spaggiari recruited a team of 20 petty thieves and gang members including an infamous group known as the Sewer Gang, who frequented Nice's underground tunnels. He secured the necessary jackhammers, generators, and other heavy digging equipment. By early 1974, preparation was complete, and the ambitious plot was ready for execution. The dig commenced in February 1974 at a discreet sewer entry point Spaggiari had identified northwest of the bank. The thieves first had to tunnel 125 feet horizontally through existing sewer corridors before they could start burrowing upwards towards their target. Progress was slow and exhausting in the claustrophobic, poorly ventilated underground shafts. The thieves took turns digging in tight, cramped conditions using hand tools, jackhammers, and a generator to power lights and ventilation. The dense summer heat made the tunnels insufferably hot and humid. One worker even collapsed from exhaustion. Spaghiari implemented clever solutions to keep the operation on track. He enforced strict scheduled breaks and rotated three digging teams working in coordinated 10-minute shifts. Pumped in fresh air, cold beers, and a standby doctor kept the men going during the grueling months-long dig. By early July 1976, the thieves finally breached the concrete vault ceiling, but before stripping its contents, some final preparation was needed. The thieves hauled the remaining digging equipment into the vault to avoid detection. They then welded the vault door shut from the inside buying them time by forcing bank personnel to laboriously drill through over two feet of reinforced steel. The incredible story of how Albert Speggiari managed to make off with over $20 million and how he outsmarted the police for 13 years afterward continues to be discussed by security experts and true crime aficionados around the world as perhaps the most ingenious bank robbery ever attempted. Here, we come to the end of our story. If you liked it, do not forget to like and subscribe and activate the bell button so that you can watch more interesting heist stories.